Firefighters know all about risk and danger. When we're running out, they're running in. But today, the risk is about more than just flames. John Stewart made that case to Congress earlier this year on behalf of New York firefighters who got sick saving lives on 9-11. I'm pretty sure what's going to happen five years from now. More of these men and women are going to get sick and they are going to die. In New York, firefighters were exposed to toxic dust from the Twin Towers. In North Texas, the danger comes from toxic residue on their gear, the jacket, the pants, the helmet. They're covered in soot after a fire, soot that can cause cancer. Firefighters say clean gear is critical to their health. Ensuring that, they say, requires three things. The first two are expensive, industrial washers to clean their suits and a second set of gear to use while that first set dries. The last piece is raising awareness of the problem, and that is free. The bell is the symbol of the last alarm. When a firefighter dies, they sound off the final alarm. Everybody can go home now. After 13 years, the last alarm. you can still see the pain in her eyes. My name is Dina Delbert Plummer, and I'm the widow of Jeffrey Delbert, a Dallas firefighter. Jeff was 39, and Dina, a young mother, was left to raise three kids on her own. You know, I'll say it, it never goes away. It's always a part of my life. Jeff was a firefighter for 13 years before he died. Exposure to the smoke of burning chemicals is known to cause cancer. And that's what Jeff had, brain cancer. Dina says one incident in particular, the older Dallas firefighters will remember. A transformer fire, an electrical transformer, that blew up and spewed out onto all the firefighters that were there, which was Jeff and three others. All four of those men have died early deaths of cancer. Three of them got brain cancer. Turns out the chemicals that day were called polychlorinated biphenyls, which studies link to the disease. So I guess with these chemicals, the threat to the firefighter's health doesn't just end when the fire's out. No, it keeps going. In fact, Jeffrey took his suit that was covered in toxins back to the fire station and he continued to wear it. And then he was eventually diagnosed with cancer. And do we know that that diagnosis of cancer is truly related to his job? Yes. In fact, the city of Dallas recognized his death as a line of duty death. And that was the first time the city of Dallas has ever done that for a firefighter and cancer. The Dallas Fire Association tells us that 60 current and retired Dallas firefighters have cancer. In Fort Worth, it's the same, 60 firefighters, and most of them are still on active duty. It's enough that it's definitely worth investigating more. Enough to worry about. It is. Dr. Jerry Barker is a radiation oncologist with Texas Oncology. He's treated firefighters over his 16 years, specializing in head and neck cancer. Without question, firefighters can come into contact with unusually, very unusually high doses of carcinogens. He says firefighters are frequently diagnosed with brain and bladder cancer, but it's tough to narrow down. They can really get any type of cancer from the countless carcinogens they're exposed to. Or even if they're able to wear protective clothing, you know, maybe later after the fire is over, they go back to their station and take off their clothing and then they could potentially be breathing in some of these contaminants. The science in this area is still emerging, but Dr. Barker says there is a growing consensus on what's happening. Firefighters have a higher risk of getting cancer. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention researched cancer in firefighters. They did it by studying nearly 30,000 career firefighters from Chicago, Philadelphia, and San Francisco. The study found, compared to the rest of us, Firefighters face a 9% increase in cancer and a 14% increase in cancer deaths. That same study found increased awareness and exposure prevention are cost-effective ways to reduce occupational cancer. Clean gear is very important. We didn't know any of that back then. Dina Delbert uses pictures to tell the story of her late husband to rookie firefighters. Her message is protect yourself from occupational cancer. When I talk to the recruits, I definitely approach it from a very emotional end. And I show them pictures of Jeff and how much he loved being in the fire department. And then I uh, tell them the story of what happened with him and how he died. And then after that, I start teaching them the ways to protect themselves. Last year, Dallas Fire Rescue started a new protocol for cleaning gear after a fire. 
Crews are required to spray detergent on their gear, rinse it, decontaminate with wipes, shower for 30 minutes, and detail wash their gear. I wasn't lying, it's just a big commercial washing machine. Then they can uh. use this, an extractor. It's a specialized washing machine for gear. Though Captain Greg Henderson says it can be used after any shift, the national recommendation is to use an extractor twice a year. Currently, the department has 18 total. There's two out here at the training facility, and there's 16 spread throughout the department. So that's the extractors, right? Mm -hmm. We talked at the top about this second set of gear and drying the second set of gear. Tell me about why that's really needed. Well, it's like when we're doing our own laundry. You have to give it time to dry. It's the same thing for these extractors, except there's no dryer for it. They have to hang dry and you know how thick these suits are. So they need that second set of gear so that they can go back out into fires and save more lives. So it comes down to awareness, clean gear, and more extractors. Families of firefighters like Dina don't think that's too much to ask for to help the men and women who risk their lives to save ours. I don't want them to die, not from this. I'll do everything I can to help. They've certainly been there for me.